Hi everyone and welcome back to the Coach's Corner. Today we're going to be talking about deliberate practice and free play and what this means for coaching and how to structure your coaching sessions and your training sessions. All right, so let's dig into what deliberate practice is. So deliberate practice is a series of repetition on certain skills. It's when athletes need to seriously focus and concentrate and everything needs to be performed perfectly. There's an old saying that says practice makes perfect, but I definitely don't think that that's the point. I think that perfect practice makes perfect. So I think that deliberate practice is tied in with perfect practice. The idea is, is to like isolate different skills and then practice those skills repetitively over and over and over again constantly getting the perfect execution and then putting them all together. Deliberate practice is purposeful and systematic so you have to set out specific goals of what you want to train and what you want to accomplish in that session or in that practice and then continue doing it until things move fluidly. Deliberate practice isn't always fun. These are not the types of things that athletes enjoy doing. It could be throwing a ball against the wall to hit a specific dot over and over and over again. Typical faces or emotions that you'll see in deliberate practice are ones like this. It's the ones that are a little bit more, I'm tired, I've been working hard and my brain is sore from thinking. Now what is free play if we have to combine it with deliberate practice? Well, free play is the fun that's had at training. It's the little games and the team coming together, having some fun. It's the place where players or athletes get to be creative in their sports, to do something called creating your own craft. So creating your own craft is something or concept that netball players use a lot because you can do so much on a netball court that is unique to you. So creating your own craft basically just means that you get to take the game of netball or of rugby or whatever game or sport you play and you get to make it your own you know and create like a unique footprint of how you want to play that game so free play in this aspect just means that you're going to set out a set of parameters and then you're going to be able to create your own magic and do and see and have fun and just take the pressures of deliberate practice off and then execute what you've been training in your deliberate practice at or in a free play situation. Now, I'm pretty sure we're all wondering what the importance of both of these components are. So firstly, let's chat about deliberate practice. So the importance of deliberate practice is obviously being able to improve your skill, right? This is what it looks like. So if you just practice normally, you're going to have a look and you're going to see this curve over here, this one. Okay, your skill level will improve, but eventually it will plateau and then there's no more improvements and you can only get to a certain level if you just practice, you just go through the motions, you don't focus on what you need to be doing exactly. Whereas when you look at deliberate practice over here, it's a constant increase. There's no plateauing. So you'll start, you'll go and then you'll stop. And it's a very common technique in periodization plans to build, 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 and then you have a bit of a down week and then you build even higher so that you can your body can make good adaptations. So this little graphy shows perfectly why deliberate practice is very important. Because if you are focusing on every single rep that you're doing, say for instance you're passing a ball against the wall to get accuracy, if you're focusing on every single step of every stage and every rep and every single rep hits the dot on the wall, then you'll get used to, your body will be able to understand what it needs to do in order to get to that point. If you're not focusing or you're not following through on the right techniques or the right methods and it's going all over the show, then you're going to confuse yourself and you're not going to be able to execute that properly in a game situation. Now, the importance of free play is what's so fun or amazing for me is because you need to still be capturing the hearts of athletes. That's what every coach's job should be, is to, yes, create a means or a platform where athletes can get better and increase their skill, but also to make sure that you, 
you impacting their life positively that they are having fun they're wanting to be there that it's not a chore it's not an obligation but it's more of an opportunity so the free play comes in to really just pull athletes together and for them to have their fun i mean depending on what level you're coaching you'll have different versions of fun so if you're coaching grade ones fun could be playing some tag or throwing bean bags in circles to get hand-eye coordination right and accuracy but if you are say for instance coaching at a high performance level then you'll need to up that that fun and make it a little bit more applicable to the age group that you are going to be coaching finally i want to look at what does this look like practically because it's very easy to listen to videos and listen to webinars and attend webinars and then they teach you a whole bunch of content and what to do and what not to do but you need to have a look and just think a little bit how does that actually apply to my sport how can i practically implement these things that i'm learning in my coaching sessions so this is what we're going to do i'm going to break it down in a few little examples okay because i'm a netball coach i'm going to use netball for my first example just because it's very easy for me to explain and hopefully get my points across so if we have a look at this picture over here we're looking at a shooting action okay so now when it comes to shooting actions you need to make sure that there's a few different points that you tick off when you're doing your motion to make sure that the ball has the right trajectory and that your release point is high enough etc 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 these things are not very important for non netball players but to try and help you understand where or what deliberate practice looks like i'm going to use it as an example so when you're busy shooting you need to be focusing on your flick right that's one of the aspects so then if you're wanting to deliberately practice better flicks then you can do various little drills to to do that so one of the drills would be standing close to a wall and then you have the ball in your hand and you literally just keep your arm still you can even hold your arm and then just flick the ball and see how it spins and rolls off another one would be to lie on your back and to do the same thing so that the ball flicks up and then comes straight back down so these are just two things that you can do and when doing or performing deliberate practice these things will be done perfectly so if it do isn't done perfectly if the ball doesn't come down where it's supposed to when you're lying on your back then it won't count and you need to start that that process again so the thing as well to do is to set out goals so say we're practicing a flick i'm lying on my back now and i'm gonna do four sets of eight for example if i mess up on one of my sets of eight then i need to redo the whole set so when you're lying on your back and you flick and then it comes down great one two three four five is skew you take a breath you take a walk you come back collect yourself and then you go again the thing to remember is that um you might get irritated the athletes are going to get irritated if they aren't performing the skills properly so it's always good to try and keep them having a level mind and a level head so if they mess up or if they don't do or execute the skill correctly that they take a bit of a walk they try and collect themselves and refocus because focus is very very important for deliberate practice if you're wanting to better your skills alrighty the second example I'm going to use to describe deliberate practice is golf I'm going to try my best because I'm not a golf player and I did have some background and someone did help me understand this. So I'm hoping that I can really drive it home with um, golf example. So, so because golf is a very technical sport, we're just going to be looking at hitting a ball straight, which apparently is very not easy. And we're going to be focusing on the swing. So just a few things that I have noticed that is important for golf is that you need to hit the ball squarely and you need to have your swing coming back and down the club head needs to basically follow the same movement pattern so wherever it goes up it needs to come down and Tiger Woods is an amazing example of that if you go and watch some of his videos and you can see what a pro he is but I feel like we all know what a pro yeah okay so there are various little drills that you can do to focus on each aspect of the swing. 
So one of the things that I just mentioned was making sure that your um, swing path is the same going back as it is going forward. So here's a drill that you can do, which would be defined as deliberate practice to, in order to actually focus on making sure that your swing path is correct. Alrighty, so I drew a little picture because it got a little bit complicated explaining. So you're going to be standing over here as your golfer, okay? And you're going to be wanting to hit the ball that way, following this little dotted line over there. Okay, so now the idea is, is to set up three balls and you need to be able to hit the middle one. So in order to make sure that your flight path or your swing path is correct, you're going to bring the club back and you're going to swing just like how you would normally swing if you were driving or practicing a shot um, to hit the ball straight. Remember, very important. Um, and then you need to be able to hit the middle one. So if you hit one of the side ones, then you know that your swing path isn't the way that it's supposed to be. So this kind of drill you would do at a driving range and you would do it over and over and over again to make sure that your swing path is correct and also take in feedback from your coach if your coach is there. Another very important aspect when hitting a golf ball or playing golf is to make sure that your elbows are tucked. So another drill that would be for deliberate practice, it would be to, it's called the towel drill. And you would basically just hold a towel across your chest here with your elbows and then you would have to perform your swings or your shots or your, your drives and then the goal is to not let the towel drop um, and if the towel does drop then you have to start your deliberate practice process again so I hope that makes sense and I did the golf players justice and I'm um, sorry if I didn't disclaimer I'm not a golf person so let's look at some free play practical examples um, this is very very open very flexible whatever you see as fun where it's not specifically um, sports related that can be classed as free play basically what you want to do in your free play practical sessions is to open up an atmosphere where they can have fun get creative um, create their own craft or develop their own craft and not have to worry about the pressures of doing it perfectly. Okay, so a very common free play aspect or example would be instead of running shuttles, you play tag. So this kind of works how the coach will say the players that get caught are going to be running shuttles on the sidelines while the rest of the players play tag until the game is done and then you play it once or twice or you would like to decide to do it as your coach um, so then that kind of gives the, the players an incentive to work hard because you don't want to be running shuttles on the side but also for the people who are the taggers to be running and working hard as well because they obviously want to see their friends running shuttles on the side so that's a very very easy way to get people doing free play instead of deliberate practice or boring shuttles and all that kind of thing. It is important to note that the requirements of, like the physical requirements, still need to get met. Otherwise, there's going to be some artful downfall to all of this. So the players need to be sprinting when they're doing tag. It needs to be a long enough duration so they cover the meters. But at the same time, that's the back thought of the coach. All the players need to see is, okay, cool, we're gonna be playing tag instead of running shuttles, I'm excited. A very common one to do in netball will be, I don't know what it's called, but you basically just set out a smaller um, perimeter on the court and then you have the same teams playing in a smaller perimeter. So then you say, okay, cool, all netball rules apply. So no running with the ball, no short passes, you can't go outside the line. And as soon as you make a mistake or the opposite team gets an intercept, then the ball switches and then they need to, the attackers now need to defend and defend, defenders need to attack and you just let that play on and play on and play on and you see how quickly the team gels together and needs to try and find a rhythm so that they're not all in each other's space because obviously they're now in a very small space where they have to get creative and think a little bit more and just have fun and when the when the attackers get an intercept then it's very exciting and when the defenders get an intercept it's very exciting and when they're having to attack it's very funny because another thing you could do for free play just at the end of a training session, regardless of your sport is, you can say to your players, okay, for the last five minutes of the training session, we're just going to change things up. Whatever position you want to play, whatever you want to do, we're going to do that, okay? So if you play netball, then your shooters can go play center or your centers can go play goalkeeper or same for 
I think it might work a little bit different in rugby. I don't think your wings can play props, but I mean, you could you could try something like that or adjust the rules so that it's still a safe practice. And then just so that everyone can just have fun, get creative. Maybe you've got some players that actually really flourish in a different position. Um, so that's also a very nice thing. Just say to your players, okay, for the last five minutes, we're going to be doing this. And then see how they run with it and cr get creative and just smile and have fun. So that's all from my side. I hope that this helped some of you and that I didn't speak too much and you could relate to my examples. If there are any other questions, you can definitely pop us an email or comment on one of our social media platforms. Um, and I hope that you all stay safe and enjoy the rest of your year and try and make the most of every situation. Um, yeah, that's all for me. Bye.